Good evening, St. Jacob. I come before you to share the state of our village. I'm happy to report that 2011 was a progressive year that was marked by several successful milestones for our community. And while we can look back on these accomplishments and feel a sense of satisfaction, we cannot rest. For as we stand at the beginning of the new year, the village of St. Jacob is confronted, confronted with many challenges. However, we're anxious. We're anxious to meet these challenges and overcome them. Overcome them with the steadfast passion and determination that is St. Jacob. The year 2011 has seen our community's financial position continue to strengthen as we surrendered the long-term debt that was incurred with the Jacob Court improvement, as well as our short-term debt surrounding the payoff of the police vehicles. In addition, our cash reserves have continued to grow. They have grown mainly due to strong financial oversight, as well as through the unprojected revenues that we've realized from the increase in building permits. These additional revenues have left St. Jacob in a solid financial position. It is projected that we will end the fiscal year with a historic high in our cash reserves of over $400,000. This will allow us to continue the trend that we've seen over the last several years, where the village has been able to reduce the factor by which your local property taxes are set. Not only will we be able to keep the local tax rate in check, the village is now in a very solid position to make additional upgrades. Upgrades to our streets, our hidden infrastructure, and the buildings of the village. These improvements will ensure that the village hall will continue to deliver services at a level that you, our residents, expect and deserve. In addition to the several new building permits issued for residential construction, our community saw the major expansion of business in town. A prime example can be seen at Extreme Auto. After several years of running a successful business in the village of St. Jacob, Brett and Robin Saigon made a major reinvestment back into the community. They made this reinvestment by purchasing and redeveloping the old Iron Horse property with the construction of a state-of-the-art auto body facility. This was but one of several redevelopments and new businesses that have come to town this late this year. In addition, we've seen the ongoing renovation of the Lantern Hotel located on Douglas Street near the post office. Lindau Construction has committed hundreds of thousands of dollars to the restoration of this historic landmark. When completed, it will become a symbol of how private enterprise through the cooperation of a progressive local government can work to maintain the historic values of a community. Perhaps a more striking example of how business and local government can come together to preserve landmarks can be seen in the opening of a piece of cake. Kathy Gilliman took her dream of opening a pastry shop and brought it to reality. Her and her husband Randy purchased an historic home that was in a total state of disrepair, but it dated back to the beginning of our village. They took this home and transformed it, transformed it into a showpiece of the community, bringing a much welcome to new business and providing a much needed service to St. Jacob. I believe that 2012, St. Jacob will continue to show positive, well-managed residential growth, as well as continue to see a community that's willing to think out of the box in its efforts to attract new businesses to the village. These are examples of the positive highlights that again set St. Jacob apart as a progressive community that is looking into the future, looking into the future to ensure that our strong social values as well as sense of community are preserved for generations to come. 
We're very proud of our accomplishments, but we realize that there is a lot of work that still needs to be done. As we confront the tasks that lay ahead, we do so with many obstacles in our path. These obstacles are more often than not being driven by outside forces. All municipalities across the state of Illinois are finding themselves under siege. Under siege by the policies of the legislature in Springfield. The current fiscal crisis that is being driven by the uncontrolled spending of the Senate and the General Assembly has left legislators scrambling for revenue sources. Unfortunately, rather than making the hard decisions that will permanently reduce the state's budget expense, they've continued to expand programs and increase spending and pass those costs on to local governments. Last year, local governments such as St. Jacob saw the reduction in their share of the corporate property replacement tax. This income was taken from local governments to fund the debt of Springfield. In addition, there's currently a proposal on the table that would reduce local government's share of the income tax. Now these are taxes that you pay. They are meant to not only fund state government, but local governments as well. The simple, hard fact is that Springfield finds it easier to divert funds from local governments than to cut spending. If these continued raids on your local sources of revenue are allowed to continue, local governments will either be forced to make the equally unacceptable choices of cutting services or raising taxes. As your mayor, I would ask you to let your legislators know that in St. Jacob, we balance our budgets and perform the much needed maintenance and upgrades to our infrastructure without incurring unmanageable debt. We can survive these hard times and we will continue to grow if, we're, if our revenue streams are left alone. In spite of Springfield, St. Jacob will continue to thrive in 2012. In 2012, I plan to form a committee with the task of finding a viable and affordable way to upgrade and replace our current water tower. While this structure has been inspected and deemed safe, the fact of the matter is, is that it's 65 years old and will need to be upgraded in the future. While there are still several years of service available in our current tower, now is the time to start planning for the future. As a result of grant funding that I was able to secure in 2011, the long overdue drainage projects located at 6th and Napoleon, as well as the locally funded drainage upgrade at 6th and Jacob, will be completed this summer. These projects are keystones that will allow us to begin replacing our ditches throughout the town with storm drains thereby providing better drainage and street maintenance village-wide. It will also allow us to continue the upgrade of our failing sidewalks and provide better on-street parking. 2012 will also see the continued redevelopment of the mill pond. This serene park that was once a mosquito-infested mud hole has become a symbol a symbol of pride that our residents take in their community. The gazebos and the benches that surround the stock fishing pond is the combined efforts of the people of St. Jacob. Combined efforts of donating time and material to create this area. The success of this park and what it has come to represent to the village and its residents is highlighted every May as our local youth excitedly cast their lines into the water, hoping to land that winning fish at the American Legion's annual fishing derby. St. Jacob's reputation continues to grow statewide as a well-managed bedroom community of 1,092 residents who consider those around them friends and neighbors. It's also looked upon as a community that provides cutting-edge services when the Environmental Protection Agency enacted strict new laws surrounding the disposal of electronic waste 
St. Jacob was quick to develop a program that would allow for easy, no, no cost disposal for our residents. It's my hope that in 2012, the Board of Trustees will give the green light and allow myself and the staff to roll out our plan that will allow residents to make online payments of their water bills, as well as having the option to place those accounts on budget billing. I'll close this evening with the common theme that I have left you with since I gave the first ever State of the Village Address in 2002. I wake every day humbled by the opportunity that you've given me to serve as your mayor. My only goal is to continue to push the envelope and my hardworking staff to deliver to you the highest level of services possible. We will continue to look for new ways to set St. Jacob apart. If we're to be successful, we need your input and feedback, both positive as well as negative. Only then can we do the job you expect us to do. Come visit the Village Hall and be heard, or better yet, attend one of your village meetings and see how your officials are doing the business you elected them to do. We not only need to be graded on an ongoing basis, we need to be told when, you're not, when we're not meeting your expectations. The Village of St. Jacob is not the buildings. It's not the people that work in the Village Hall every day. And it is certainly not the elected officers of our community. The Village of St. Jacob is you, the people who make up our community, the greatest place in the world. I wish you a very peaceful and prosperous year, and I'm here to serve you at a personal level if necessary. Again, I thank you, and I bid you good night.